energy work. Tai Chi is an ancient Chinese martial art that is slow paced. It's smooth connected movements of all body parts and it emphasizes the mind and body connection. Uh, tai Chi comes from a belief system that focuses on Qi and Yin and Yang. Qi is an energy force thought to flow through the body. This unblocks and encourages the proper flow. Yin and Yang are opposing elements that make up the universe. This promotes balance and keeps these in harmony. Tai Chi can be used in multiple ways. There is warm-up stretching. This can be used for loosening muscles and joints. Short forms is recommended for beginners, older clients, and those not in good health conditions. Um, short firm forms are just shorter movements, shorter duration, um, less changing of positions. Long forms tend to be more intense. This is for strengthening, flexibility, balance, and aerobic exercise. Qigong is beneficial breathing techniques. This is a primary focus in Tai Chi. Qigong stands for breath work or energy work. The benefits of Tai Chi. As I mentioned, muscle strength, flexibility, balance, and aerobic conditioning. For muscle strength, this can improve lower and upper body strength as well as abdomen and back muscles, so it's very important for the full, full body. If you consistently do Tai Chi, it is comparable to resistance training and brisk walking. It helps with flexibility. This boosts upper and lower body flexibility. Balance. This is extremely beneficial for older um, patients. It helps reduce falls. And as people get older, they have issues with their proprioception. Uh, so Tai Chi helps train a function of sensory neurons in the inner ear and stretch receptors in the muscles and ligaments which helps improve this. Aerobic conditioning, um, this really depends on the speed and size of the movements used during your Tai Chi exercises. Uh, the longer you hold the position is more strengthening. Uh, the bigger the move is um, more strengthening, can result in more balance, etc. Limitations. Um, Tai Chi can be done by anyone. There's no limitations to who can participate. It can be practiced standing, sitting, or lying down. They even hold classes for individuals that are in wheelchairs, so it's very broad to who can do Tai Chi. There are some other limitations that might be outside sources, such as it's unexpectedly tiring, the mindset, and painful. By this I mean, although Tai Chi is considered low impact, it can be long and intensive on both the mind and body, and the mind is really important to Tai Chi. So Having a clear mindset can be difficult for some individuals if you're going through some mental and emotional health concerns, or if you're just bored easily, Tai Chi might not be for you. It might be even more exhausting. Um, it can also be painful. This is a full body workout that exercises all muscle groups. So if you feel sore after the first time you do it, you're more prone to give up. Um, each time you do it, it's gonna focus on the body as a whole. Precautions. Some things to consider, even though I said everybody can do it, is past medical history, medications, and mus musculoskeletal concerns. Those with limited musculoskeletal problems or medical condition might need to make some adjustments to what movements they're doing, how long they're doing it for, and those taking medications that can make you dizzy or lightheaded should consult with their doctor first. Um, it might be best that you don't do these standing. Maybe you need to adjust and lie down. Patient care. Incorporate into care. So how can we use Tai Chi in the, the healthcare setting? Providing education on what Tai Chi is and the benefits is really important. Um, you might not see Tai Chi while you're working in a hospital. Uh, but teaching that this can help with their body in a healing process as a whole with strength and conditioning and clear their mindset. Um, we talk about, Tai Chi talks about the older environment a lot. Um, as you get older, looking at statistics, individuals tend to get more down in the dumps, tend to have more depression. 
So being able to clear their mind and practice something that also strengthens their body would be super beneficial. And it's important to teach them that. Emphasizing that this exercise can be adjusted to all needs is also very important. Uh, many people say, I can't do it because this, I can't do it because that. But this is something where you can do it while you're lying down. Um, so it really could be adjusted to anyone. Provide resources for local Tai Chi classes or instructors. Putting people in contact with where they can find this type of um, exercise locally or just somebody that might run an online program could be extremely important. They, It's not a very common thing. It's not like yoga classes. Some yoga centers might have Tai Chi, but you won't know. You might have to do some research. Something you can start in the healthcare setting is focusing on breathing techniques with the patient. Um, something that I have found myself teaching is when a patient is getting overwhelmed, I tell them to take deep breaths. I've taught them counting um, while breathing, picture an image and trace it in your head while breathing. There's just different breathing techniques that you can use and educate patients on that can help clear their mind. Uh, so when they do Tai Chi, they might be able to have that positive mindset. Things to consider. So in Tai Chi, the language can be very intimidating. Uh, the sets of movement forms have names that honor the people who devised them. So when you're taking Tai Chi, you might hear, oh, we're going to do Yang, or we're going to do Wu, or we're going to do Chang. And a lot of people get discouraged with the fact that they don't know what that means. It's not like um, child's pose in yoga, where I feel like that's incorporated a lot in many exercises or any exercise program that you do. Uh, these are kind of unique and they have names that kind of steer people the other direction. Talk to your doctor first. We touched base on this. If you have any medical conditions, musculoskeletal problems, or are taking any medications, talk to your doctor. Find out what adjustments you have to make. Uh, dress comfortably. These movements are very wide ranged, so you don't want to restrict your range of motion. Also consider what you wear on your feet. Oftentimes people go barefoot, but if this is something that you do enjoy, there are Tai Chi shoes, which make you kind of feel barefoot, but also give you kind of better balance and grip on the ground that you can consider buying. Observe and take a class before committing. This could be very important. As I said, Tai Chi is not for everyone. Um, you might not find it healing trying to clear your mindset if you have too much on your mind. It might feel more draining to you than anything. So take a class. Um, Meet with an instructor, get to know them, feel comfortable with them, and then make the decision if you want to continue this process. My questions to you. Why would Tai Chi be beneficial to not only patients, but healthcare workers too? Explain a time where you took care of a patient who would have benefited from Tai Chi in the healing process and why. Thank you.